doctor, you were discussing the laminectomy, were you not on your direct examination? That is correct. What is a laminectomy? A laminectomy is an operation on the spine. And is it true, doctor, that it removes a thin piece of bone from one or more vertebrae? That is correct. And this piece of bone, called the lamina, form part of the protective arch that covers the spinal cord and runs over the root of a spinal nerve. Doctor, removing the laminae or lamina helps the, to widen a spinal canal, does it? Well, that has become narrowed, yes, as a result of age-related degenerative changes. Doctor, why in this case was a laminectomy needed? It was needed because there was known spinal stenosis. And what is spinal stenosis? This is associated with enlargement of the facet joints between the vertebrae, which increases pressure on the spinal nerve roots. Doctor, does it involve a narrowing? Yes, a narrowing. Of what? Of the spinal canal from other conditions. Such as what, doctor? Such as osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, osteoporotic fractures, and tumors, which can also increase pressure on the spinal cord itself, causing a variety of unpleasant symptoms. Doctor, the laminectomy may be needed for what? It may be needed for surgical access to an intervertebral disc that has bulged out of place or herniated to press on the spinal cord. Doctor, does this often or is it referred to as a slipped or ruptured disc? Yes, it is. And operations to change the shape of a deformed spine will also involve what? It will also involve a laminectomy as part of the procedure. Doctor, the spinal column is made up of 33 small bones or vertebrae. Is that correct? Yes. Do they surround anything? Yes. They surround and protect the spinal cord. Doctor, at the base of the spine are what? At the base of the spine are the five sacral vertebrae, which are fused to form the sacrum, and the four coccygeal vertebrae are fused into the coccyx, or tailbone, in the upper part of the spine, the seven cervical, or neck, 12 thoracic and 5 lumbar vertebrae interlock as in a series of sliding joints that give your backbone flexibility. Doctor, these upper 24 vertebrae are separated from each other, are they? Yes, they are separated by the intervertebral discs. And doctor, these are pads of cartilage, are they? Yes, which have a tough flexible outer coat, the annulus fibrosus, and a soft jelly-like center, the nucleus pulposus. They are designed to set as, or to act as shock absorbers, cushioning the vertebrae from sudden jolts. Doctor, let me ask you this, can it be done as an outpatient? That is, the laminectomy? Well, I think that that is not necessary. Do I need a general anesthetic? Yes, you do. What special tests are needed? Well, the diagnosis is usually made on symptoms and examinations. The plain x-ray and myelography in which a special dye is injected in a region, that is, the subarachnoid space surrounding the spinal cord to outline it on x-ray. Doctor, may it be carried out on magnetic resonance? Well, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, or computed tomography, that is, CT scans, are also employed to identify if a disc is injured uh, or if spinal cord compression is present. Doctor, what about an electromyography? An electromyography is a test that measures nerve impulses to muscles and may also be suggested in this instance with this patient. 
How long does the surgery take? It takes from 30 minutes to one hour. What is the mortality rate, doctor? That is, you mean how long will he be in the hospital? No, I want to know what the mortality rate is. Well, the usual stay in the hospital is for an average of two to three days. How expensive is it? How many are performed in the U.S. each year? Around 230,000 laminectomies are performed in the U.S. each year. Just over half of patients are male. There is a trend toward inpatient procedures becoming less common as more non-surgical alternatives and minimal spinal surgical operations become available. Doctor, is it not true that over 860,000 outpatient procedures, including injections, are carried out annually to treat intervertebral disc disorders? That is the statistic that is bandied about. Doctor, with increasing age, the intervertebral discs start to wear out, dehydrate, stiffen, and shrink, so they are more susceptible to damage. Is that true? This can weaken the protective fibrous outer coat so that the soft center, the nucleus pulposus, bulges through under pressure. If it bulges forward, it may cause any symptoms. If it bulges backward, however, it protrudes into the spinal canal and may press on the root of a spinal nerve or on the spinal cord itself to cause symptomatology. Doctor, the laminectomy allows what? It allows surgical access to the disc. And, doctor, so that it can be removed or reshaped? Yes, as part of a lumbar discectomy. Doctor, this discectomy is the excision of a disc? That is correct. And the factors that increase the chance of a disc herniating include what? They include the improper lifting of heavy loads, smoking, cigarettes, being overweight, and performing repetitive strenuous activities. Doctor, let me go into the symptomatology. Very well. The symptoms due to pressure on the spinal cord or spinal nerves due to stenosis or a prolapsed intervertebral disc can include what? They can include back pain, which can be severe enough to cause immobility, pains shooting down the leg or sciatica or arms if a cervical disc is involved, the leg pain on walking claudication, that is, weakness, numbness, or tingling sensations in one or both legs, arms, or a buttock, burning sensations in the spine, shoulders, neck, or arm, and finally, the difficulty with or loss of bladder or bowel control. I'll give you some common medical words in there. Like nucleus pulposus. No one ever spells that correctly. <laughs> 